Hello, I am Mike the Zorch, and this is another Zorch Reacts to Inside Star Citizen. And this episode is Year in Review, Fall 2021. So this is their episode where they are covering everything that's happened in Star Citizen over the past year, and there have been a lot of changes to the game. So don't let anybody tell you that this game is a scam that it's not being worked on it is it's gotten a lot of updates over the years and over this year particularly it's gotten some pretty big updates some very important ones so as i haven't watched this yet i have not seen it yet so let's get into it Hey y'all, just when we thought 2020 was a year unlike any other, <laughs> 2021 came along and showed everyone that expectations were made to be broken and that there's no planning for the will of the people. Oh, 2021? 20, 2020 was a dumpster fire. 2021 was a nuclear dumpster fire. So in our last ISC of the year, let's take a look back at what made 2021 the biggest year for Star Citizen yet. Oh, yeah, in yeah, January, the year began with the longest-running fan-organized event in Star Citizen, the filthiest race in the verse, the Daymar Rally. Mm -hmm. Now, when devs returned from their holiday break, <laughs> they found reports of a bug that was threatening the year's event and were able to develop, test, and push out a fix just in the nick of time. It was how many games? How many games do you know of do that? Do something like that, where the community is doing something. They find a bug, and then the developers rush out a fix so that their event doesn't get screwed up. I mean, look at uh, look at what happened with the Gnosis uh, event in Elite Dangerous. Take a look at that. I mean, that's a a ship that was controlled by an in-game group. And the ship, because of the way the game works, the developers had to move the ship. Well, they, the players selected a location where they wanted to go. Well, the developers have to approve the location. Well, they approved it. But it was to a location that was surrounded by a bunch of um, systems that you couldn't normally get to because they were permit locked. They were way out somewhere in the galaxy. There's a lot of systems you can't get into deep out in the galaxy that are permit locked for some reason. Because I guess they're being reserved for future stuff. And, well, you know, you may have heard the story when I talked about it before. They moved the ship, all right. They moved it to a place where the, where the ship with all players that are just their ships equipped for travel or for deep space exploration, not for combat, got in the middle of a big fight with a bunch of Thargoids and trolls. And it was a shit show. Here, CIG is actually working with the community for their for their community run events. You don't see frontier development doing this i mean there are big community events there are there's the uh, distant worlds events where they'll get a bunch of people together and they will go on a long distance journey across the galaxy but you never see frontier developments getting involved unless they have to for some reason like um if they have to for PR reasons or whatever. I've never known them to get involved in distant worlds. Never know them to really do anything. But CIG, they will get involved and they will help. Let's continue. It was a start to the year that reminded us all how Star Citizen only exists because of backers and developers working together in support of each other's shared mm -hmm. dreams of a first-person universe unlike any other. January also saw the return of the Combat Summit, 
a gathering that would set the stage for what would become the most substantial series of updates and improvements to Star Citizen's flight experience yet, leading to the power management and capacitor changes, missile guidance and control rework, mm -hmm. operator mode improvements, and more that would come throughout the rest of the year. Uh, one of the things they did was they have if missile operator mode now, where before a co-pilot really didn't have that much to do. They could just sit and control the MFDs or maybe a turret, a remote turret or something. Well, now the co-pilot can control the missiles. They can go into missile operator mode and they can target a craft and uh, it's supposed to be able to target uh, ships that are target ships independently of where the pilot is pointing the ship. I haven't tried that yet. And some turrets uh, are equipped for it on certain ships. So you can actually target a ship that is not directly in front of the vessel you're in and then launch missiles. I haven't tried that yet. Uh, we don't have many ships with missiles, at least me and Tigra don't. The Kyrak doesn't carry missiles, but we do have a few other ships that do, and we'll have to test that. January 2021 also said a temporary goodbye to Delamar, the outlaw planetoid that had been sleeping on mm -hmm. Stanton's couch since late 2017, when it was removed in PGU to make way for the new planetary tenants arriving soon. Don't worry, we'll see you again soon, Delamar. February brought with it Alpha 3.12. Yeah, Dalamar, that's a big deal. There was a, that was one of the first voiced um, missions, the voiced NPC missions in there. And they had the best shop where you could get ships and stuff. Now, now it's been, that's been fixed. You can get just about every shipping game now through one of the, one of the ship stores that are a ship dealerships that are in the different landing zones. You can get those now. Point one and the release of our first dynamic event, Xeno Threat, where the Outlaw Group launched a campaign of violence oh, throughout the scan system and players came forward to combat the scourge. It was a first of its kind event that brought everyone in the persistent universe together in a common cause to, well, most everyone. <laughs> Some of you just got to do your own thing. And believe me, I respect that. But it was a chance for everyone else to fight with and against the fabled Idris and the biggest step forward for capital ship combat in the persistent universe yet. 3.12.1 also brought with it a bunch of bug fixes, EVA quality of life improvements, more prison missions, and improved inventory for shops throughout the verse. While the Red Festival brought new red and gold ship paints for the Nomad and Freelancer, hmm. And then for those who were lovers and not fighters or cargo haulers, Coromore 2951 brought with it a Valentine's Day contest where the community had wonderful submissions I like the ones you can uh, see here. get into that. As well as some using my likenesses that we will not be showing here. <laughs> I did send one to my mom, though, so she could see what kind of stuff I have to deal with. <laughs> she said you're all as special as I am. And I still don't know how to take that. <laughs> March began with the first wave of our long-awaited ship naming coming to the Persistent Universe, where proud owners of the Hammerhead, Reclaimer, Carrick, Mercury Star Runner, 600i, and 890 Jumps could reserve their very, very, very small names. Hmm. They got better. They're getting better. <laughs> March also brought with it a new Cyclone MT. Oh, that would be cool. And our first do. look at the Persistent Universe's reputation system, a turning point moment in the continuing development of the Star Citizen experience, adding consequence and reward to almost any action or decision you make, and allowing our developers to build a sense of true progression as more and more systems plug into it from that point on as it went into testing with Evocati that month. April I've been building up mine. I've been building up my reputation. I've been able to get better missions, better delivery missions, and I'm going to start after I upgrade my, I think I'm going to, I've got an arrow. I think I'm going to upgrade the, the weapons on the arrow or the Avenger Titan. I know I'll take that ballistic gun off and maybe put an attrition repeater on there. 
and be able to do bounty hunting missions because those can earn a lot of money. April then kicked off with the visually impressive reveal of the long rumored Origin 404, or as Paul Jones called it, a sausage dog with toilets. And we all know <laughs> that when art director Paul Jones says it, you can take that to the carrot killer. April also saw new Star Citizen merchandise arrive, in-game Star Kitten helmets for subscribers, hmm. updates to the referral program, and a little thing called Alpha 313, which mm -hmm. brought with it all manner of new goodies like brand new cave entrances and sinkholes giving new opportunities to explore with ground vehicles and oh, spacecraft I've alike. seen a lot of videos new on those. New asteroids created with our refined process for more variety and less potato-ness. Mm. A wrap-up to the polished revisions of every planet and moon in the stand system, improving the overall look and feel of everything from Aberdeen oh, they, to Yila. Oh, they do look a way better. They do look way better. I mean, the planets in Elite Dangerous used to look really good, but then when they, after they dropped Odyssey, I mean, they just look awful. I saw a video from Obsidian Ant recently, and... I hadn't gone into the game in a while, and the planets looked like 8-bit garbage. I mean, it was it's that bad how they messed it up. How Frontier messed up Elite Dangerous. It's that bad. It's horrible. And I've done these missions. New mission types like Quantum Sensitive, Timed, and Multi-Drop Deliveries. Um... New staggered force reactions, object push-pull trolleys, mm -hmm. mounted guns they still won't let us put on trolleys. Give the people what they want, Rich Tyrer. I actually used one of those mounted guns. I actually did use one of those. Wish I had filmed Merlin it. Merlin Constellation docking. Vehicle visual degradation and our first ability to wash some of our ships. Mining subcomponents to improve that forever improving system. Mm -hmm. SDF shield effects to patch these holes and make for better looking effects overall, and the bigger and badder Rock DS mining vehicle. That's subjective. Now, not to be outdone, May came hard with Invictus Launch Week and Alpha 3.13.1, which brought players inside the Battle Heart and Javelin yep. class this destroyer cool. for their first glimpse of life aboard an actual UEEN vessel. It also brought the C2 and M2 Hercules Starlifters into the Persistent Universe to forever change the meaning of weight class. Mm -hmm. Made it an early Tonkmas with the arrival of the <laughs> Tumble Nova. Gave us our first look at the currently in development. I want one Scorpius. of these. Gave racers a chance to compete in our Ooh. first Microtech Metro Loop race. And shocked everyone when the big mammer jammer itself, the Bengal Carrier, came cruising through the Stanton system. To that say it was a sight to behold huge. was an understatement, and was a fitting tribute to, be a to what was already ship. well on its way to being Star Citizen's biggest year to date. So, June, listen, you're going to take a break, right? After those crazy April and Mays? You'd think, but not at Star Citizen. When June said this is the way, beginning with a new Azatlan <laughs> light armor for subscribers, issue council improvements and new multi-user private lobbies to make getting into games with their friends easier than ever before... I've noticed they've done something with, with all this. None of the servers are completely full anymore. But two, two things have happened. One, 30Ks, gone. Me and Tiger have spent like six to eight hours on a server with no crash. And also I found that most of the time, actually all the time now, I can actually sign on to the same server Tiger's on because it's not full. They're actually spreading people out more. The servers are still limited to 50 players each. But we're able to spread out more. And what's going to happen is there's still going to be 50. Each one's going to each one's going to be a shard. And it'll still be 50 players each. But they'll be able to, to communicate with one another. So even though you might be on a shard that can only have 50 players, you'll be able to see the other people on the other uh, it's supposed to work that way, from from way I heard it described, so that there will be, if there's a lot of people in an area, you'll be able to see them and interact with them. That's how I, that's based on the description how it's supposed to work. 
It's sort of like Elder Scrolls' mega servers, things like that. Uh, it's a way of being able to have a lot of people in an area without overloading the servers, because the servers have been really overloaded a lot. They still have to do a lot more with server meshing to make that work more smoothly, but what they've implemented so far has gotten rid of the server crashes. Completely gotten rid of them. An alien week that brought with it the newest ship manufacturer in Gitac and its oh, Raylan cargo that's a solution. Cool ship. New paints for the hottest offerings from Mapoa, <laughs> Asperia, and the Banu. An intragalactic cook-off that contained enough cookies to spike <laughs> my blood sugar just by looking at them. <laughs> and this thing Jeremiah and I made on stream that Dave Haddock still won't acknowledge or talk about. <laughs> just wait until you see what we make for Luminalia tomorrow, Dave. All right, June then. also introduced us to our next dynamic event, the Nine Tails Lockdown. Mm -hmm. Improvements to the upcoming Xenothreat Redux and new limited edition model kits from our partners at JR Design and Fabrication who made that enormous life-size dragonfly you saw at CitizenCon and that's sitting in two giant crates right next to this desk. That they we, we still have to get some uh, glue or, or I forget what they called it. Um, 3D Printing Nerd had a video where he was with... Um, Neil Patrick Harris, and they were making a picture frame from 3D printed segments. And he had this stuff that he used to glue PLA together. Well, we 3D printed a Carrick. It's the original Carrick design from the concept, uh, but we need to get that stuff to stick the two halves together. But we do have a, we did print the Carrick from Star Citizen, and I'm going to see if there's other models to print the other ships. Uh, the, um, the Cutlass Black, which was designed by the same guy that designed the Razor Crest for the Mandalorian. So the Razor Crest has some of the DNA of Star Citizen in it. Anyway. They still won't let me open. <laughs> we also learned that Ian Leland doesn't know what seven layer dip was that month. I know we're only talking about the highlights, but that's a, that was a pretty big one. <laughs> July was public test universe month as Alpha 314 and its edition of Star Citizen's next landing zone, Orizin and the gas giant crusade this was a needed, big deal. required an enormous amount of testing and quote unquote banging on the pipes from backers and developers mm -hmm. alike. Together, the two represented the next major milestone for our planet tech content, environment, engine, graphics, VFX teams, and more. And along with it came many of those flight combat changes that began their journey back in January, a revitalization of the way radar, scanning, and ping worked throughout the universe, and new canvas slice HUD made possible by our continuing development of building blocks that That's provided an improved layout that, that maximized screen real estate while laying the groundwork for manufacturer-specific visual design still in development like the Aegis and Drake ones you can see here. Hmm. And after living most of July in PTU, Alpha 314 was joined by the Constellation Taurus when it came to the live servers in August, along with our first version of volumetric clouds that would steadily improve over the remaining months of 2021. New merchandise like the Finley Stormwall plush that looks to give Pico hmm. a run for his cuddly money. Our first chance to meet several new faces at our newest development studio at Turbulent Montreal and more. Turbulent is busy working on star systems. They're going they're the they are going to be building out the one hundred or so star systems that are going to be in the game. So that's primarily what they are working on. Though they're working on some other stuff, that's their primary goal is to get those star systems built for when the game launches. So that's what they're working on. So if you've been wondering, oh this game only has one star system, well these guys, they're the ones building the rest of them. Now inside the verse, if the new Nine Tails lockdown didn't threaten to make your day enough, Xenothreat returned with a bunch of lessons learned from their first encounter and improvements to the overall flow made with feedback from our players. Now, <laughs> now that said, 
Ninetales and Xenothreat weren't the most insidious forces to make their presence known <laughs> in the month of August. Oh no, for August was the beginning of Ship Showdown and the end of all sane reason and accountability when the vile armies of Argo began their campaign of <laughs> and ship brackets alike. No, we will not be showing any pictures or videos on this one. That was the that was the the community trolling CIG, making the Argo cargo. It's a little tiny ship; doesn't even have the ability to go do quantum travel. It's this little itty bitty little ship with a, with a little bit of cargo space in the back and and maybe one or two passenger seats. And they trolled, they trolled CIG, making that the ship of the year. <laughs> It's my show. <laughs> I will mention <laughs> another community event in the Fight or Flight Double Elimination Tournament, where content creators from all over the world went head to head in randomized ships and loadouts for the first of its kind event that I sincerely hope returns in 2022. Now, October, there's a month, and it was perhaps the biggest month in the biggest year of oh, yeah. Star Citizen yet, beginning with the return of CitizenCon in digital only form. It was a day packed with exciting looks at the upcoming pyro system, including new AI systems utilizing new planetary nav mesh, bringing new life and possibility this won't be to the possible new planets and moons of Star Citizen's precision universe. Fully it was also our first look at the newly reconcepted Banu Merchantman that's recently entered production. Mm -hmm. The Anvil Liberator light carrier that may prove to be essential in barren systems without a gas station on every corner like Stanton. <laughs> The official reveal of the long-debated 400i from Origin. New advancements in planet and cloud tech. An update on server meshing with graphics that nearly killed Vicky. <laughs> and much, much more. <laughs> it was also where we saw tremendous offerings from our community in the cosplay contest and perhaps my favorite part of the entire day, community videos that showcase precisely what separates the Star Citizen community from every other gathering of fans and gaming. <laughs> now I want you to know that if the entirety of Sleepless and Stanton isn't playing right now, complete and uninterrupted, it's because somebody's punishing me for skipping September. <laughs> Now, in addition to CitizenCon, the patch with the most widespread and healthy impact on life in the persistent universe since Alpha 3.0 dropped to PTU in October with Alpha yep. 3.15. The death biggest of a space step man. yet in realizing the vision of Death of a Spaceman set mm -hmm. forth in the beginning of our crowdfunding campaign. That began with the addition of downstates, allowing for and encouraging group participation so that players can better keep each other in the fight dealing with new injury states like broken arms and legs that impair their ability to fly or otherwise traverse the universe, and administering treatment to players and NPCs alike through healing. And Tiger ran into a bug, which, they, which is being fixed in the next update, 316, which is coming before the end of the year, where you get thrown off of stairs when you run out of a hab too fast. And it and it killed him. And I was able to drag him onto my ship. And hopes I would be able to use a medical pen on him. I didn't have a medical gun. He thought I had a medical gun. I didn't. And he died. Luckily, we were able to keep his body so he could get his stuff back. Because normally, when you die, if you can't get back to your body in time, you lose your shit. Now this was coupled with the death of global inventory and the new tiered implementation of a local I to like vehicle, this new inventory to external, to when it works. inventory revamp. Now from this point forward, the planning, considerations and ultimately choices players would make would be more important and impactful to their gameplay experience than ever before. Along with I got additional that systems suit. like loot generation giving players more reward for their increased risk in the field, new infiltrate and defend missions bombing mechanics alongside the new A2 Hercules Starlifter. Oh, yeah. That thing Additional deadly. improvements to Crusader and the Auras and Landing Zone and Hospitals, the only place I see more than Kleischer Prison in the <laughs> play. October was the month that Same. life in the verse truly changed forever and gave us our best glimpse yet at what 2022 has to offer. 
<laughs> now as Alpha 315 moved from PTU to live servers in November, it was followed soon after by Alpha 315-1, which brought with it a return to the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo, the biggest showcase of spacecraft and vehicles in the Star Citizen universe. Yeah. Now, this year's event saw the reveal of the Anvil Spartan, hmm. the new Aegis Redeemer. That was an interesting the ship. That's an interesting ship. The Redeemer is an interesting ship, and the Spartan. Uh, that's a competitor to the Ursa rover. Now, uh, this thing. I actually flew this thing. Go raft. The Ares Starfighter Ion and Inferno from Crusader. Never flew those. The Misk Odyssey. We actually and the Jets bought one. Midlife crisis. An Odyssey. I don't know, Jimmy. <laughs> Maybe this gig is passing me by. I mean, clearly I'm out of ideas. I'm rehashing old material without even realizing it. It was an exciting event as it is every year, <laughs> and one whose effects I think we'll be feeling this time next year. I'm just saying... By the way, those videos that they do, all in-engine. So they're not pre-rendered with 3DS Max. They're actually doing it with the Star Citizen engine with those. Jax is going to come back from Pyro with the who knows what. And that brings us up to December and the upcoming patch. Now, as we've seen throughout this year, not all the content included in a patch cycle will arrive on day one, as the use of our point patch system has been tremendously successful in keeping fresh each and every month of 2021. Mm -hmm. Now, that said, pending any further surprises, our next patch cycle will include a new hospital in Area 18. So that will finally the open up. The physics rework we showcased last week that will make this vehicles badly new needed. fly better than ever before. <laughs> They're still yeah, not they talking about here. that. The new Jumptown 2.0 dynamic event, which we should really come up with a better name for because it's also Raven's Roost in Paradise Cove now as well. <laughs> And something new to help players hold down those drug labs, allow me to introduce to you the Cutlass Steel, the newest offering from Drake Interplanetary huh. that lets you bring people and guns to bear on targets like never before. Let's start with the guns. We heard you like guns. So in addition to the four size three gimbals controlled by the pilot, one man turret with size threes, we've added an additional remote turret with size two, a whole bunch of missiles, and of course the brand new hotness five door-mounted ballistic gas oh, two on each side and one at the rear shit. a veritable death blossom of firepower down upon raven's roost paradise cove a jump town cutty gunship just about anywhere Ooh. then once you cleared the area we go inside the ship to discover a whopping 18 jump seats full of mercenaries or commandos ready to maintain control it's a of the drop area. ship and gunship. is it a lot maybe is whoa it possibly is it Drake? Through and through, you bet your butt it is. The Cutlass Steel will be straight to flyable when our next patch goes live. Let me try some unofficial ad copy here. The Drake oh, Cutlass Steel. Righty then. It's a lot. All in all, it's pretty easy to look at 2021 and be incredibly proud of what we've accomplished together. We know it's not always an easy path and that the yeah. road bumps and Detours along the way can sometimes make for a frustrating experience. Yeah. But for those of you who have, true. who have watched this year's over 100 videos on YouTube or Twitch, or read the 250 plus com links on the robertspaceindustries.com website, or engaged with the thousands of dev posts across Spectrum, Reddit, or social media, mm -hmm. we hope this all gives you a sense of just how much this project means to us how much your involvement sustains us and how much we very often share the same feelings in both our victories and our setbacks. Look how different they are from Frontier Development. Look how different they are. Frontier Development doesn't communicate at all. And right now, they're in the middle of banning people who even mention Star Citizen or even talk about or even mention any problems with the game they're in the middle of acting like a bunch of little kid i'm gonna come out and say it they've been infiltrated by sjw's and if you don't like that 
Well, fuck you. They say that video game development has always been a collaborative process, but perhaps if we've learned anything this year, it's that none may be more so than Star Citizen. Mm. And we're thrilled to have shared our 2021 with you. For Inside Star Citizen and on behalf of Cloud Imperium Games, I'm Jared Huckabee. Come on and hang out with Jeremiah and I one more time for the before <laughs> the holidays on Twitch tomorrow. And uh, we'll see you right back here in the new year. Take care. Cool. This game is making progress. They are making progress on this game. And I can't wait to see what they're going to do next year. And uh, this has made some tremendous changes. So that was the recap of everything that happened with Star Citizen in 2021 and it's been a long road a lot of stuff has happened and the game has made some significant improvements some significant improvements so uh i don't know if this is going to be their last one of the year it might not be but we'll see next week what happens i think they're going to take a break for christmas so, for Christmas and New Year. So, this might be the last Inside Star Citizen of the year. But, we'll see. Anyway, uh, this has been Mike Resorch. Reacts to Inside Star Citizen. Thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon. So that you'll be notified of any new videos. And... Also, don't forget to check out the Gamers Bay community. You'll find the link to that in the uh, description below. And I'll see you in the next video.